FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network, and I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is Hard to believe the 1st of June, 2020. How did we get here? I feel like I've lost three months during the whole lockdown craziness. Some states locked down more than others, but every small business, every business in America has been affected, rightly or wrongly, whether you believe in the efficacy of the lockdown or not. It's something we all had to go through. Well, you probably noticed you've stopped at a restaurant, gone to a small business, and you might have found that they implemented a COVID-19 surcharge. Let's talk about that first, though. I want to know if you've gotten surcharged for COVID-19, what your reaction was, what you said to the owner of the business. You can email me, kl at kerrylutz.com, kl at kerrylutz.com. Right now, Angela Sloan is with me, founder and CEO of Sloan Financial Group, a financial expert. Angela, it's great to have you back on the show. So what up with the... Uh, with the COVID-19 surcharging business. Well, first, Carrie, thank you so much for having me back. It's always a pleasure. And folks, if you're out there and you're blessed enough that you have the money, that you can go eat at a restaurant, share. And that's all I'm saying, just share. Bear in mind, this restaurant at full capacity was at a 10% profit margin if they were lucky. Now the government says, or the state, wherever they are, they have to operate at 25 to 50% capacity. And they can't turn a profit. If they're charging you a surcharge, it's not because they're trying to run you off or trying to rob you. They're simply trying to survive. As a business, and if any of you out there are business owners, you understand, if there's overhead, who do you have to pass that to? Your customers. You don't have a choice. So please, if you're blessed enough to be eating at a restaurant, if you're blessed enough to have the money and you've not lost a lot of income and you have the money to go eat at a restaurant, keep that in mind. These these guys are in survival mode. We're, you know, my husband and I have talked about, about it and we we're trying to support these restaurant owners as much as we possibly can. Same thing with the salon owners. You know, these those two industries have just been hit so hard. And if you think surcharges are something new, think again. You've seen them before, and so have I, back when the fuel prices spiked so high. If you booked a cruise on a cruise ship, you paid a fuel surcharge. You booked an aer airplane flight, you paid a fuel surcharge. You received a FedEx or a UPS package or anything that operated on fuel, you got a surcharge. So this is nothing new. And believe me, business owners want your business. They don't want you. They, they, they don't want you going somewhere else. They don't want to run you off. But it's either charge you the surcharge or close the doors. Yeah, I could not agree with you more. And uh, maybe maybe the way to do it is just to be a little more open about it. Just have a notice up there because, well, you know, the name of the show obviously is Financial Survival Network. And right now, businesses are really barely hanging on. You might have a business like that and you've got to enlist the community support and goodwill basically to keep you alive so that you can make it through this. I totally agree with you, Angela, that if you're fortunate enough that you can afford to eat in a restaurant and they charge you the surcharge, you know, just to add it in. And if they don't charge you a surcharge, you got to understand that your server who relies upon tips, gratuities for their survival they're taking a big hit in their income. And exactly. You, you know, yeah. the restaurants operating at, at 25 to 50% capacity. Guess what? That wait staff just took a 75 to 50% pay cut. Yeah. And, if that restaurant's operating at 25% capacity, they have 75% less customers that they can earn tips from. So when you're tipping that person, be generous and be thankful and just say, thank you, Lord, that you've blessed me enough that I can bless this other person. Yeah. Yeah. As a, you know, pay it forward, pay it backward. A lot it's of going to be you yeah. that has the need one day. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a funny thing. Like I was doing some webcasts and 
a Facebook uh, group about the stimulus. And I just said, look, whether you think you need the stimulus now or not, take it, get the PPP loan, do what you have to do. You know what? If you don't, it turns out you don't need it, then you'll pay it forward, donate it to a worthy charity or help some people with it. And if God forbid the day comes when you do need it, you'll have it. And I think we're all in this together. Unfortunately, my business has gotten impacted, but it appears to be relatively temporary. Um, but we're in this together and you really have to think about uh, how we're all going to get through it together. Yes, I couldn't agree more. Um, and again, if you're blessed enough and fortunate enough to be patronizing one of these businesses that's charging you the surcharge, thank your Lord and then be very generous. Yeah. For sure. So what other COVID-19, you know, you're, you deal with a lot of clients. Uh, what have you uh, seen as far as how they're getting through this? Well, most of mine, um, are ha they have the attitude what I just described. Um, and most of mine, you know, I had them on automatic pilot as far as their income. So they're not concerned about their income and their money being in the market and being exposed. You know, if they have money in the market, it's one, they can afford to be there. And two, I don't have them depending on the market for income. Um, so mine have fared very, very, very well. Um, now, as far as my tax clients, I have some that's been greatly impacted that are, say, in the restaurant business. Um, you know, I have a couple of clients that are machinists, you know, they own machine shops, and they've been impacted because factories have been impacted. Right. And, you know, they do contracts for, you know, big truck companies and that making parts. And so, you know, when those companies had to start laying off and doing all the social distancing, then, of course, it impacted. It, it, it's like dominoes. Yeah. It just, you know, it had a domino effect. And yes, some of my clients have been impacted as far as my tax clients, not so much my investment clients. Um, but on the tax end, we have seen some pretty sad stories. And we we try to, you know, again, thank God that we are where we are and try to help those as much as we possibly can. Yeah. And that's uh, that's really what it's about here. So what about the way forward after the lockdowns finally end? We resume some semblance of normalcy. What are you thinking uh, the world's going to look like? Well, I think the world as we knew it before COVID-19 has changed. I really think that some of these big companies have found that they can work from home and yes. they're not going to need the big office spaces that they once had. And that's that's a lot of overhead. You know, their office space, their workspace, that's a big, big overhead. So they're going to see where they can do some cuts and continue to work at home. So I think investing in companies that provide those type services for them to be able to work at home, and in particular, the 5G internet service providers, that kind of thing, I think that's going to be the, the new world that we live in. Um, we are we are social creatures. We're not made for social dis distancing. That's just not the way God Definitely made not. us. And I really think we are definitely going to see a second wave. But the, the horse is out of the barn. You know, we're not going to avoid it. And if you are physically, um, if you have physical limitations, then, you know, keep yourself safe. But those of us who don't and the younger crowd, we need to keep our economy going. Yes. Um, and, you know, that would my husband said, you know, I really think that those 65 and older, you know, stay at home. And he said, I know that impacts me because he, he just turned 65. <laughs> he said, but the youngest ones, the younger ones, they can go out and keep the economy going. I don't think we're going to see another economic shutdown. I don't think we could. I don't think we would survive we another economic it. shutdown. I yeah. Agree let with the you younger more. ones get out there and, and let them handle it. You know, we had one employee that has a lot of health issues and she was vulnerable and mm -hmm. she does a lot of tax returns. So when a tax client would come in, we would take that tax client to the smallest conference room and she would talk to them over the phone and go over their tax return with them. And they would be right there in the office, but up the hall from where she is. Mm -hmm. So we kept her quarantined, so to speak, right? you know, away from the public coming in, but she could still meet with her clients. You're going to see a lot of that kind of stuff taking place. And thanks to the technology, we could have that person in the conference room looking at a monitor. She could be going over their tax stuff with the, mon you know, with the monitor. Mm -hmm. And then another employee would go in and say, this is where Janie needs you to sign here, here and here. Right. Okay. Well, let's, uh, so 
So we really are coming together here and really helping people, huh? FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Lumina Gold, ticker symbol, LUM on the Toronto Venture, and LMGDF on the OTC is yet another of legendary mining investor Ross Beatty's Lumina Group. It's advancing the largest primary gold deposit in Ecuador. The resource is estimated to contain 16.7 million ounces of gold and 2.2 billion pounds of copper. At just $7 US per ounce gold equivalent, it trades at an incredible 13% of its net present value. More good news is on the way with an updated PEA study expected in Q2 of 2020. It has unparalleled infrastructure. There's grid power to camp with plentiful, inexpensive hydropower available. It's close to two ports and is just eight kilometers from a paved highway. Water is plentiful. It's at low elevation and the closest community, which is very supportive of Lumina's effort, is just a seven-kilometer ride. With all this going for it, it's likely to follow the typical Ross Beatty formula, which means big returns to shareholders. Find out more and sign up for notifications at luminagold.com. That's lumina, L-U-M-I-N-A, gold.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do what we have to do. And you know, that's what I love about Americans. We, In the end, we always pull together. We always work together and we always survive. We might have our differences and we might fight amongst us. It's kind of like brothers and sisters. We might fight amongst amongst ourselves, but united mm-hmm. we stand. Yeah, that is a good thing, and it's got to make you feel good about it. So, you know, we're going to survive about, this think thing, about right? The flu. Think about the flu back in 1918. They didn't have the technology, and, and no. they didn't have everything that we had today. But like I said, the horse is out of the barn. We're not going to put this virus back. We're, we cannot stay in quarantine forever. No. And it's just like the flu. Every year the flu comes around. Every year it's changed a little bit. They're trying to chase it down with a different vaccine every year. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they don't. And every year a lot of people die from the flu. And I don't think this is going to be any different. Well, I think I'm it's going to be very to similar. I'm inclined to agree with you there, Angela. So I think if you, if you use your common sense, wash your hands, keep your hands away from your face mm-hmm. and don't be up in other people's faces. <laughs> Yeah, I think we, you know, those of us that are healthy, we'll be okay. We're, we'll be fine. Yeah, there's still going to be some casualties, and I'm not saying that lightly. Mm-hmm. But we well, I just agree with you more. Just, it's just the world we live in. The world we live in. I mean, we could debate the uh, wisdom of of going into uh, lockdown. You know, probably not the best idea in a lot of different levels, but we are where we are. What do you think the lessons are of the whole lockdown and pandemic scenario? What have you learned personally? Well, I think there was, you know, it's easy, easy to be a Monday morning quarterback. You know, it's easy to look back and say, well, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. There was so much that we didn't know. This was so new. This virus was so new. And we were getting all these reports of how horrible this was going to be. And it was thankfully nowhere near what they thought it was going to be. And I wonder if, was it not as severe because we did do the quarantine? I think we, we might've did the quarantine a little too long for the economy, but maybe it wasn't necessary initially, but I think the, the projections were, were way out of kilter. Yeah. Thankfully. Obviously. Thank goodness. (laughs) But if it had gone the other direction, we'd be griping about that too. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no doubt. We'd be griping no matter what. But, right. But let's face it, uh, we're going to get through this thing. We're really, we're just kind of uh, getting to the breathing room again, right? We're just starting to breathe again. What is that? Right, right. Exactly. And like I said, back in 1918, when that flu pandemic came around, yeah, we didn't have all the all the medical advancements. No, had that we had. They didn't have ventilators. You know, we, we complained about not having enough ventilators. They had none. <laughs> Yeah, we had a big nothing. Right. <laughs> right. You know, we, they didn't have the antibiotics that we have today. They didn't have the malaria drug that everybody's been talking about. You know, so much of this stuff, they just didn't, they didn't have it. Right. So be thankful that if this happened, it happened this day and time. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, uh, to, like I said before, you're preaching to the choir, but, uh, but look, uh, so life is going to go on. Obviously, a lot of people have passed on and we really feel bad about them, especially for those uh, elderly and who were in the 
in the uh, real in the nursing homes, yeah. which could have been totally prevented. And yes. my sister-in-law is in a nursing home. We've not been able to see her for eight weeks, eight or nine weeks. Wow. They have had cases. They won't tell us how many. Yeah. At first, they were telling us how many. And when they got up to 10, after mm-hmm. 10, they started saying, oh, we have multiple cases involving staff, nursing home staff and patients. Right. We're fairly certain my sister-in-law's roommate tested positive because she told us, we asked her how her roommate was doing over the phone. And she told us that her roommate uh, was taken to the hospital because she had such oh. a high fever. And we said, we can't come see you because they won't let us. And she said, well, I'm not in the same room. They moved me up the hall. And I said, oh, do you have a new roommate? She said, no, I'm in this big room all by myself, which tells me that her roommate that was taken to the hospital probably tested positive and they've quarantined her. But they're giving us so little information. And finally, we have them doing a conference call with us on Tuesday. So we have a, a conference call with her with her caregivers on Tuesday. So hopefully we'll be able to find out more information. But we've not been able to see her. Fortunately, we we had her cell phone, so we've been able to communicate with her. But yes. she, we can only get out of her what she can tell us. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> you don't know how really accurate, tough. right? Really tough right. there. Yeah. God, can't even imagine what you've been going through. So our thoughts and prayers are with you. And thank you, Angela. So people want to find out more about what you're doing, connect with you on the web. How do you do that? It's www.sloanfinancial, S-L-O-A-N, financial.net. All right. Excellent. And uh, we will have a link in the show notes to your site. We appreciate you coming on. We wish you and your family the best and getting through with this, dealing with it. And I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Be well. Thank you, Carrie. You have a wonderful week. Oh, hey, and before I forget, uh, you can email us, kl at kerrylutz.com, Twitter feeds at Carrie Lutz, Facebook page, Financial Survival Network, and of course, sign up for our free newsletter at our website, financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Angela, thanks again. Thank you, Carrie. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.